Welcome to Business Line's State of the Economy podcast, where you'll find insight, analysis, and the story behind the numbers. Hi, dear listeners. This is Rajas Simban. Welcome to the State of the Economy podcast. In this episode, we are going to discuss the impact of liquefied natural gas, or called LNG, transport by ships to India. This is in the backdrop of the recent issues related to the Red Sea and geopolitical challenges due to the Ukraine-Russia war and the Hamas and Israel conflict. To discuss these, we are joined by Ajay Singh, a board member of the 140-year-old Mitsui OSK Lines of Japan. He is responsible for the group's businesses in the Indian subcontinent and West Asia besides assisting with its energy transition and strategic transformation. In this episode, he discusses with us the company's recent LNG deal with Gale and various issues related to Indian shipping. Let's listen to what Singh has to say. We'll start with the recent deal with the second ship for Gale for their LNG. Can you just elaborate what the deal was and how you are helping Gale in the movement of LNG? Yes, in December last year, we deployed our latest newly built LNG carrier to meet Gale's transportation needs, LNG transportation needs. The ship is called the Gale Urja, Urja as in uh, energy. And uh, it's currently on its first laden voyage from the United States to India. In fact, I think she will be arriving at Dabol or has just arrived at Dabol. It's our second LNG carrier for Gale and the 98th LNG carrier in MOL's global fleet. Uh, Our LNG carrier fleet is the largest in the world. The first ship we deployed for Gale was the Gale Bhuvan in 2021. And Gale is also a shareholder in that vessel. The company is among our top customers, or what we call charterers in shipping, and also our joint venture partners. So we're very proud of our association with Gale because they are now among uh, the leading LNG importers and traders globally. Both these vessels are the latest best in class. They were both built at uh, Deu Ship Building and Marine Engineering. Now it's uh, been acquired by Hanwha in Korea. And each of them can carry well over uh, 170,000 cubic meters of LNG. Can you just give a perspective on uh, the LNG demand and supply in India and uh, how uh, companies like MOL uh, helping in this supply? Yes, of course. Uh, so LNG demand in India, gas demand in general is growing quite strongly. The government has its policy of uh, trying to increase the share of gas in the energy mix to 15%. So we hope to see continued growth in the LNG volumes. As far as shipping is concerned, the LNG shipping business into India uh, in a dedicated way started with the import uh, by Petronet LNG at the the H terminal. They had the contract from uh, Qatar Gas. Um, And that's been going now for 25 years. Amol has been a part of that project. It's a joint venture with the Shipping Corporation of India and uh, certain other shipping companies. And since then, we've been part of almost every LNG shipping project involving India. We're also investors in an LNG import terminal, you know, so-called FSRU, or Floating Storage and Regasification Unit. It's sort of a floating LNG import terminal. That's coming up at Jafarabad in Gujarat. And uh, there we've helped to build the FSRU vessel. The vessel's already been delivered and it's been operational for a while uh, at the moment outside India. And we are operating that ship. So we've been active participants in the growth of India's gas industry. Uh, It's heavily reliant on imports. And we see the import dependency continuing. And LNG shipping is a core part of our business. Can you give a perspective as to how uh, some of the other countries where you operate uh, compare it uh, with India? Some kind of an example. The oldest LNG market we've been servicing, of course, is Japan which is still among the top LNG markets in the world. Um, And now China is the largest LNG importer. So we have a very strong presence in China also. And those two countries uh, tend to bring in most of the LNG on a long-term basis. So LNG shipping is essentially there a matter of ensuring first and foremost safety because it's a cryogenic liquid at minus 160 degrees Celsius. Safety is extremely important. And then it's essential to maintain time-bound shipping so that the supply is uninterrupted. It's a pretty complex business. As you can imagine, you've got a vessel coming, say, from the Middle East or the U.S. Gulf of Mexico, loading the cargo, sailing halfway around the world. And it has to be uh, on the dot in picking up and delivering the cargoes. 
because there are quite stiff financial penalties associated with uh, missing any shipments. So the ships tend to be contracted on a long-term basis, either by the buyers or sellers, and they've tended to operate on what we call a tram line. So they operate between the same load and discharge ports for many years, over and over again. So the petroleum LNG shipping arrangement is this kind of a model, and it remains pretty key to maintaining uh, energy security. But in addition, LNG shipping has now been evolving because uh, it's been recognized now as key tool for managing the risk. So LNG contracts are characterized by take or pay commitments. And this is one of the reasons why Indian buyers in particular have been relatively hesitant to sign on for long-term deals. Uh, but now LNG contracts are becoming more and more flexible. So you can divert the LNG to suit changes in demand and uh, in prices. So buyers and sellers also now have tended to become more of traders. They keep an eye on global supply demand and on prices, and they tend to divert the cargoes. So they recognize that access to reliable shipping is absolutely essential if you want to exercise this flexibility. So the vessels also then have to operate across a wider set of ports, no longer just the uh, you know base case origin and destination, but they can be called upon to go to any port where the LNG is diverted. So safety management is absolutely critical, even more so. So having the trained seafarers and the knowledge in the system so that you can take on uh, a diverse set of voyages, routes, is absolutely vital. So the LNG supply chain, maintaining the reliability as well as the safety, this is something which is becoming even more paramount. Uh, in India, can you just talk, uh, is Gale the only client uh, do you have or you have other also? So as far as LNG shipping is concerned, we have post Petronate LNG, which is the largest uh, client. We have Gale. Uh, for other classes of um, liquid gas shipping, you know, whether it's LPG or um, ethane, we have a range of other customers. So Reliance is a customer, Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, all of these companies are our customers. For LNG, essentially, it is Petronate and Gale at the moment. It's quite interesting. Uh, if you look at the airline industry, uh, we have a similar situation in the shipping industry also where we don't have uh, strong Indian vessels to carry these. Uh, so what is your perspective on that? Well, you see, again, if you're talking uh, mainly of LNG, uh, back in the day when the passionate LNG deals were done, the government had a very strong policy that the LNG had to be carried for that particular deal on Indian flag vessels. So that was really the origin of LNG shipping in India. And uh, thanks to that policy, these ships were acquired with Shipping Corporation of India and international partners like Apex, the participants. At the moment, recognizing again the you know the diversity which exists in LNG contracts, vessels under any foreign plan can also bring in LNG to the country. That is what is happening. The Red Sea issue is, uh, uh, is really hotting up and uh, is creating a lot of disruption in the global supply chain. Uh, how mm. about the LNG movement? Uh, what sort of uh, things have you seen in the last, say, almost 68 days now? Well, so as far as uh, MOL is concerned, we are simply not operating in the Red Sea at all at the moment uh, because the safety of the seafarers, the lives are the most important thing. So we are not operating in, in the Red Sea at the moment at all because it's a very unstable situation. Vessels are getting attacked. Uh, sometimes we find even on account of mistaken identity uh, because we can't find any plausible re reason why certain vessels have been attacked in the past. While we've been fortunate, none of our ships have been attacked. We've taken note of what has uh, happened, uh, unfortunately, to other ships, and we've stopped operating for the moment. We are watching the situation very carefully. It's a very troublesome situation as far as um, Indian um, energy industry is concerned, because India imports a very large quantity crude oil, LPG, LNG from the Middle East. Uh, so although the Persian Gulf remains open at the moment, uh, you know, we're very mindful of the potential for this uh, situation to, to actually escalate. We hope that does not happen. Uh, India also relies on the Red Sea route to export its goods to the Western markets. The source canal is a vital uh, global artery. So we hope uh, the situation will improve soon and that normal operations can uh, resume. Okay. And about the uh, geopolitical issues, again, uh, we see the uh, war in Russia continuing and there are also troubles in uh, other parts of the world. Uh, does it have an impact mm -hmm. on the LNG movement? It does. And not just the current situation with the Israel, Hamas, Gaza war or the Russia-Ukraine situation. We've had a series of major supply shocks you know, starting with the pandemic in the recent past. Now, what this does uh, is creates you know anxiety and uncertainty in the minds of the buyers. Plus, we've got the whole debate around decarbonization at the moment. So there's a degree of uncertainty over what will be the availability of the future clean energy sources 
shipping is under a lot of pressure to try and eliminate or at least reduce the use of conventional uh, fossil fuels now considering all of these uncertainties in the wider economy also uh, whether hydrocarbons will really be used or in future we are going to see uh, uh, zero carbon emitting fuels coming in so this creates a degree of uncertainty in the entire energy industry and lng buyers have been therefore a bit hesitant to contract for big volumes on a long term basis and then when there are supply shocks so they need to react at short notice as a result of which uh, suddenly you have to come up with the ships sometimes now coming up with the vessels is not easy it takes about 3 years to build a new lng ship it's very capital intensive it costs over 250 million dollars per ship at current prices and it's a relatively low margin industry exposed to a great degree of price volatility as far as uh, shipping rates are concerned so managing this Managing the supply and demand of shipping is pretty challenging, uh, but uh, we have a large global fleet, and with the support of our customers, we are able to manage. So we are continuing to support India's energy supply through all these changes. Uh, moving on to sustainability issues, uh, you I know uh, you are a strong proponent of the green hydrogen. How is India progressing in this sector? We see a lot of action. Companies like major companies, Adani's, uh, Reliance, uh, giving out strong projects on green hydrogen. So, where do you see the shipping uh, industry in this, and how MOL is planning to tap this sector? Yeah, so you mentioned. I mean, yeah, I've taken an interest in green hydrogen for a while actually before it became quite uh, so well known and popular. So back since 2018-19, I've been taking an interest. in those days one had to explain really what was green hydrogen and why it was um, an excellent idea so I remember in the old days going to meet the iog and other uh, stakeholders in india and explaining all of these things and then what we've seen during the pandemic is there was this huge surge of interest globally so it's quite remarkable to see the degree of interest and it's very heartening because green hydrogen in particular is a very very uh, elegant solution using just water and sunlight Uh, to produce renewable power you can carry out electrolysis and you get this completely clean fuel so the production process is clean and when the hydrogen is consumed the only by product is is water so it's a great solution and if you look at india in particular more than uh, half the entire foreign trade deficit of india is only on account of import of crude oil um, and natural gas so if you can produce clean hydrogen domestically you can consume it domestically so india has that great advantage Uh, because you don't have much of a transport cost its production and consumption within the country and at the same time when we are cutting the foreign trade deficit is a huge boost to the economy so the government recognized this extremely well and as a result of it you've got the national hydrogen mission which the prime minister himself announced uh, a couple of days ago and i think that's extremely promising so the government policy is very positive and i have every confidence that uh, india will become a very major uh, producer and consumer of green hydrogen potentially also an exporter of hydrogen derivatives so we have seen a number of projects in india now and in the middle east being proposed for production of green ammonia so you can produce ammonia from the hydrogen and ammonia is a very efficient way of transporting hydrogen and the shipping industry will benefit from this because in future we are preparing to transport ammonia as a fuel uh, we are already carrying ammonia by the way so we have ships which transport ammonia but in future these ships will also use ammonia as a fuel we are working in, uh, on ammonia fuel ship designs and all going well we expect to have the first vessel which is capable of burning ammonia as a fuel on the water by 2027 so we are looking forward to business from indian producers be it reliance or adani or the two groups you mentioned but also a number of other potential producers who are looking to export the ammonia to foreign markets so we hope to carry this ammonia for them we also hope to consume some of this ammonia in our own ships as a fuel so all in all i think it's a very positive thing for the shipping industry in addition to the economy as a whole uh, finally ajay a uh, uh, background on mol's uh, presence in india and uh, what's the road ahead yes so mol has been operating in india for a long time so we are a very old shipping company almost 140 years old close to 900 ships in our global fleet now so we are uh, among the top shipping companies globally across all sectors and in india we have operated for uh, more than 100 years uh, traditionally it used to be what's called an agency business so the indian operation was uh, acting as an agent of the overseas uh, mol fleet uh, in addition to that we are now also actually owning and operating ships under the indian flag so we are i think the first top global shipping company to actually establish an indian ship owning subsidiary 
And uh, we have 12 ships operating in India at the moment, most of them under the Indian flag. A government policy provides certain incentives to do that, which we are taking advantage of. So we are expanding our uh, uh, ship owning business in India. We are also looking at Gift City, which is a good initiative from the government to promote all kinds of ship leasing activities. We are increasing our footprint in India for ship management, uh, you know, which is an activity whereby to technically monitor the ships uh, from ashore as they operate all across the world. So we are now bringing in a certain number of ships into India, which will be managed from India. And if that goes well, we are looking to expand that presence. Indian seafarers are a very major uh, proportion of our international seafaring community. More than half our uh, seafaring numbers are Indian origin or Indian officers and ratings. We have a training institute in India running for the past 25 years, which recruits, trains and deploys seafarers for our global fleet. So all of these activities are are growing pretty well. And for us, India is a very key market. So as the economy grows, we are hoping to also grow with it and bring in and operate as an Indian shipping company. Uh, thanks, Ajay. I look forward to meeting you in Chennai. It will be my pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for your interest in our company. Yeah.